Uh, I guess before we formally start some um, just like bookkeeping, uh, we're off next week for the project club. Um, and then we have two weeks of um, daylight savings craziness with different countries going on and off of daylight savings. So our next meeting will be in April, uh, April 1st. Um, that's part of why I wanted to push to get through like the entire set up a server section of the book because that gives us three weeks or basically a month to play with things and, and do projects and you know see what we wanna do with this stuff. And then hopefully when we come back in a month, uh, we might have some interesting things to show one another. So uh, without further ado, I'm actually I'm gonna get rid of this extra one here. And we can. Oh, and uh, just to um, check in with you, right now we have a screen sharing and we can only see about half the screen. Like the. Yes. The, okay, this cool. is just why. to make sure that that was on purpose. <laughs> yeah, it was semi on purpose. Um, I okay, hadn't gotten my windows arranged, but uh, thank you for, for checking that. Um, so, yes, what I am going to hopefully do today. Yeah, okay, that one is, done, is getting out of the way. Um, I've been doing this uh, repeatedly-ish, and so I've done it twice um, all the way through, and I've done little pieces of it uh, several times. So hopefully we can go from effectively nothing to a an EC2 that will have R4DS, or not R4DS, our studio running, and it'll also have a plumber API, and we should be able to see how it could have any number of plumber APIs basically. So we could set things up there. Um, I'm still just using the free level micro server. I haven't added any storage when I do these because we don't need it. Um, so it's not like fully functional, but it should get you to the point where you can kind of poke around and see what's left to do to make it fully functional. Um, I mean, technically it's fully functional, it's just, um, like you could run out of room <laughs> pretty easily. Um, this is something like I had done parts of this, but the ways I had done it, it was much more difficult <laughs> than like someone who actually knows what they're doing, telling me what to do instead of me experimenting and finding difficult paths. So um, I, I don't know. I found this very interesting. Uh, all right. So last time that we you know, we started this section and then he changed it and we went back and did some other things and then came back. And so uh, like a month ago, we had set up an instance and not done anything with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch there. Uh, it doesn't take much time at all. Um, you know, we can give it a label. It doesn't matter what the label is really, but uh, I just freed that one up. So I will use it again. Um, we want to use uh, Ubuntu, uh, which actually doesn't come up in the filter at first. Okay. Uh, we're just going to use the top one, the 22.04, uh, which is again, it's a free tier eligible image. Um, we're sticking with the micro, but that is something that you would want to change for a production instance, uh, very possibly. And I am going to use the key pair that I had already created and downloaded during that previous session. Um, and something else that um, I'm not gonna do it just because I, I want to show what to do if you're like upgrading or changing things, but um, they, uh, when you create a security group, you can just tell it HTTPS and HTTP, allow that through the security group from the start. That's what I would do if you're doing this from scratch, but I wanna, I'm want i gonna leave it where we hadn't set that up so that later we can come and see how to add those in. Um, again, I'm just gonna leave the one drive. Um, we don't need any more than that for now. And so that should be ready to launch. All right. And so now if I refresh, I can hopefully, uh, the terminated one is still showing there. That'll go away after a little bit, but, um, so this one is standing up. Um, you can see I have one sitting here. This one is set up 
uh, so I guess I can show you the end a little bit that uh, this one is set up to so secure. It's at my URL and we've got in our studio there. And we also have a Palmer Penguins API. Oop. Uh, oh, if you spell it right. Uh, oh, not our studio, geez. Okay, there we go. A Palmer Penguins API that is just returning some um, statistics about Palmer Penguin or about that data set. Um, and you can like see the full API at the docs. So that's what's already there. Um, the nice thing about that is that means that the uh, DNS already knows that this IP address is 4DL.io, which is gonna be helpful because that means we can demo this live. And when we change the um, IP address to be on our new server, then it'll just kind of work. Um, and hopefully that'll make sense when we get there. So, okay, this is running. I, I vamped long enough. Uh, so that's all the do what we did in chapter 10. Um, any questions before I rush past that? All right. So if you had that running and you just wanted to get it, you know, um, if you had stopped it and you didn't want to start it back up, you do that here. And I'm going to need this public IP uh, DNS. We're going to come back and recopy that many times. And so actually I am going to throw that over into a window that I will copy and paste a few times so I don't have to necessarily come back to this page. Um, and yeah, that looks, you know, looks like this. It's this thing here. Uh, technically, I think pretty much everywhere that we use that, we can just use the straight up IP address. Um, but that's the the like URL version of it. All right. On Windows, I'm going to be doing everything from Windows PowerShell, but use whatever shell you have and are comfortable with from previous chapters. And we're going to SSH over into that server. Um, I'm going to find where I had stuck that key, which is over in this do for ds labs folder. And I'm going to go in as the Ubuntu root user to my EC2. And I'm gonna, yep, I'm going to allow that to happen. And so this is this brand new server. I'm I'm logged into it, and the first thing we want to do right right away is let's stop logging in as uh, Ubuntu as the, like the root user. Um, we're gonna instead I'm gonna create a user named John uh, in the notes. It's test user, but the final version of this I'll probably actually use. So I'm gonna um, set it up as my username. Um, I am going to set it up with a. Uh, password that I will change at the end of this in case I accidentally reveal it. <laughs> and then it has all these fields that you can fill in of like their full name and their room number and different things. So you can just leave those blank. And so that's all set. Um, and then we want to also add the user to the group pseudo, which means that uh, this user has permission to uh, do all the like root level things. All right. So yes. All right. Everyone uh, still with me? I can only occasionally see faces. So all right. Let me move my windows a little bit more. <laughs> Oops. Like that. Okay. Um. All right. And yeah, I am going to be kind of rushing. So. Um, Stop me if I rush too much, but I want to try to get through the whole thing so that we have it in like one video. Um, so for the next step, you need an SSH key. Uh, I went through this and then realized, oh, wait, no, I already have an SSH key. And having more than one in my, um, like my SSH folder on my machine makes things not work as well. You want like one key. And so... I did this whole thing where I made a fake key and I, I was doing it. And then I went back and got rid of it um, and just went with the one that I already had that like you can um, you can use this SSH, SSH key gen, but you can also just use our studio. It has a key gen like in it. Um, 
whatever, like there are lots of ways to generate a key. If you already have one, use that one. It's probably in a .ssh folder in your home directory. All right, and so now we're gonna have like this step um, is on my local machine. And so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna keep two windows, uh, one that I use for local stuff and one that I use for the server. All right, and so uh, I need to SCP the uh, using, this is the last time we're gonna use that um, key that is like the, the um, top level key. Uh, we're gonna use that in order to send my SSH key uh, to the server. So we're gonna do this as Ubuntu and we're going to use that server uh, URL. All right, and so that did that. And if we look here, um, why did that? Oh, I, mm, and then you wanna have this, the <laughs> path of where to put it, I am guessing oops, that I just put it in the root. Uh, I think I'm gonna end up nuking the server because I don't know where I put it, but it's um, somewhere. Are you sure it's not um, under a hidden? Yeah, dot SSH. Um, it shouldn't be okay. because that is the key that this user uses. Huh, so don't do what I just did because I don't know where it stuck it. Didn't give an error. That's interesting. If anyone knows where that is, let me know. I'm probably gonna uh, nuke this server when I'm done because I don't like having it. In, I mean, it's the public key, so it's no big deal. Yeah, um, uh, John, when you when you copy without the path, uh, it, it is in your local folder. So now, if you just do ls on your local machine, you will see. Okay. You should see there it is. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so let me get rid of that. Okay, now let's try that again. Uh, SCP colon slash home slash. Ubuntu. So I'm sending it to that location. Uh, that should be all set. It's Ubuntu at, yes. I was like, that didn't seem right. It didn't, yes, it didn't show us the actual SCP. And so now we go here, there it is. It's in this folder. Um, we need to use sudo, sudo to move this to uh, the user. Um, oh, uh, to the user. I didn't say what sudo move, uh, or geez, ID RSA to the user. <laughs> what the heck's going on? And I need to ch own. Uh, actually, it should have been the other order. It would have been just less typing to do that, uh, but whatever. Oh, then it won't, it won't auto create or auto, it won't tab complete with this, but um, sudo chown that, and actually the name comes first. So John, there we go. So, all right, so we're giving that, we're, we're giving ownership of this to my other user. Uh, and I'm doing the commands that he has in the book, obviously, uh, not obviously, but actually if I, Go back and edit these notes. Some of the order on this is a little weird. Like some of this would be easier to do as the other user, um, but whatever, it all works out in the end. Um, I'm going to become my other user. So, uh, Sue. So. All right. And so now I am John and I can go to my home directory and see that I have that file there. I'm going to make my SSH folder, I'm going to set it to um, like uh, read, write, execute by me and only me. And then I'm going to take that uh, ID RSA and put it into that folder in the authorized ease file. 
And so that file is um, what will be consulted when I try to SSH in with a with my private key. It'll say, okay, yeah, this this public key matches your private key that you're using. And I'm going to make that um, uh, read and write only by being. So that's that. And then I may just clean up and get rid of that extra copy of the key. Okay. So now in theory, and, and yeah, I had this thing. I'm like, I still had to use this whole path thing. Yeah, that's because I was doing it wrong. If you just put it in your .ssh in your home folder, that's what your that's what SSH is looking in to find your private key. So just do that and your life will be much easier. So mostly you can ignore that piece. All right. Uh, next, we want to install R, but actually before we do this, um, I want to actually log in as myself. So I'm gonna get rid of that and- it, um, um, John, I have one additional comment. Sure. Um, is that for people who might, who might be watching this later, um, <laughs> there is also the SSH copy ID um, functionality that most SSH um, installs come with. And okay. it takes care of a lot of, like it will take care of your personal machine to the user that you've set up ah. on your server, copying the ID automatically and putting it in the right place. So that doing it that's by a yeah. root is the way that you did it. And that's like, and, and that works that way. But if you have already set up root and you've set up a, a secondary user, you can do second, you can do um, SSH copy ID from your personal machine to that user automatically. Okay, cool. I I don't know how to do that. So um, that sounds like something we should definitely uh, add into the notes or yeah. at least we've got it in the video here. So um, great, yes. Like I said, a lot of these yeah. steps, it feels like um, I think partly because he broke it down, it becomes kind of overcomplicated because he's trying to show certain pieces at a time. Um, but whatever there's also you know like if it works it works <laughs> and so um but yes thank you very much so in the chat we have uh the information about using copy id all right so now that is set up and to show that i can ssh as john and it allows me to go in um and that one if we go back here again you can see i don't have to like tell it where to look i'm just saying i'm going to go to this server as me as john and it uses my SSH key and it lets me in. All right, this next piece, um, when I tried to rerun this, I uh, evidently had, uh, oh, there's something that didn't copy paste nicely. I have an extra space in something or something. So I'm gonna go to the instructions, but I'll update this in the um, in the doc the next time I come through. This is just, he, he gives us uh, the URL to go to for this rig that our lib um, manages that it's an R installer. The reason it's nice to use this is you can tell it, as we're gonna do in a second here, to add the release version of R and it's like, whatever the current release is, it will download and install. You don't have to, uh, or you, I mean, you can, but you don't have to tell it, I want 4.2.2. It's just, I want the latest one. Um, this becomes important that these notes still remain relevant in I think it's two weeks from now is when 4.2.3 comes out and then uh, rig add release will just auto install that. So, all right, I copied that. Um, I need my password because I'm doing a sudo in there. All right. And so it uh, grabbed this and um, installed it. And so now in theory, at least when we rig add release, there we go. And it's going to install uh, the release version of R. You can also use that, like there are different levels that they talk about in rig that instead of release, um, uh, we could choose um, development next old release uh, to select different versions. And again, it's just relevant to like today, what is the release right now? Um, and in a moment that will be fully installed. Uh, I, I think I mentioned, I don't know, I mentioned somewhere that I um, 
am not going to do the step in the book where we do where he sets up uh, Jupiter Lab or Jupiter Hub because uh, I don't need it <laughs> for what I'm working with. But he has the instructions in the book for doing that. Uh, but just so I, I ran R here, we can see that yes, I have uh, R installed. It's four four point two point two. Um, so that's all set. Okay. So uh, this next step, he he does you know he says go to our studio and like copy paste instructions from there. Um, I'll go ahead and load that, but I, I copied them over so that we can have that ready. Um, I'm okay with these cookies, so we would want to use Debian, and we you know we tell it what we're using that we're using 22, yada yada yada. So that's that's where these instructions came from. I just copied these yesterday, so they should be at least good enough. To go. Um, this is setting things up in order to download. So the you know this is like the installer effectively. Um, this is the uh, URL or the you know where we're downloading it to our local directory, and then we're using that uh, GDB to install it. Uh, yes, I want to install it. And then we hit something accidentally. Okay. And when it's done installing, we'll be able to check it with this uh, system CTL call. Uh, any minute now. All right. Um, so actually it showed us like it does the call at the end that shows us that's running, but we can call that again at any time and we see, you know, it's, it's active. Um, we just can see that it started. Um, oh, and then the last piece is just some cleanup that we did download this file and then we installed it so we can get rid of it. All right. So now we have our and our studio on our server, but we can't actually use it. So we're gonna do a um, like temporary just check that um, we can tunnel uh, into the server. So what we're doing with this is SSH. I don't know what the N is, but I needed it, and I didn't take it. I didn't have enough time to learn this. Like it didn't work when I first ran this. Um, I did some googling, and Google said to put this N on there. So for now, I am just kind of running with that. If anyone knows why I need it, <laughs> that would be useful to know. Um, I, I don't know, and actually I changed some other things. So let's try it without the N. He didn't have the N and, oh um, yeah, it's just like, it logs into the server. That's not what I wanna do. I wanna tunnel. So- Yeah, it, um, it, it doesn't matter, the tunnel is still working. Okay, okay, so I am tunneling. Okay, so it, it works so that, yeah, the N, is I think, you know, don't log into the server. I think that's yep. what the end does there. Okay, so it works. It's just uh, uh, also logs into the server. I think I probably just, yeah. Once I disconnected, it killed the tunnel. Otherwise I could have, if I did the NL version, actually I'll go ahead and do that to have the comparison. What that'll do is just like- Says N is do not execute a remote command, which I think that, Typically, the remote command is bash, just like start okay. the bash shell. So if you do SSH yep. minus N, it means don't start a shell, just yeah. sit there. There you go. Yes. So yeah, instead of starting in a shell, it'll just run as a process in this window, um, whatever. Like, uh, number one, it doesn't matter that much because we're not going to keep doing this, but this is a way to check on our way there. Um, but that's good to know. Uh, so I, I'll update the notes there. I don't actually need the end. Um, but yeah, oh, and I've just kind of glossed over, but hey, cool. We have our studio running on the server. Oops, we had our studio running on the server before I killed it. Um, and, uh, you know, like I can log in. I use the password that I have set up for that account. And I'm not going to save that password because it's not real. And voila, we have our studio. It's running, you know, it, we're tunneling into it on our local host, but it is, it's actually executing on the server, uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you could you can access also on the public IP. 
So that's yeah. Uh, no, actually, we can't yet because we don't have HTTP open. So because we explicitly didn't open HTTP, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. it won't work. Um, and I can actually. But, it, but it's better to tunnel anyway because you don't want, you know, data going over the internet. Right. Yeah, HTTP, right. 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 And so, you know, we can see like this isn't going to load um, because we don't have that open. Uh, so again, I didn't do the Python and Jupyter Lab step, but follow the instructions if you want to do that. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to close the tunnel. Okay. But I am going to go ahead and install Docker. Um, and that's going to, actually that goes pretty fast, but um, let that run. Um, we can see that this did fail to load because we don't have that port open. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, we can check that Docker actually loaded, that it doesn't throw an error when we do that. And semi-mindlessly, we're going to use what he has set up. The, the one thing to look at here is he's putting it at port uh, 8555 uh, to avoid uh, conflicts, basically. And what this number is isn't that important, just that it is 8555. And if we wanted, we could put something else at 8556 and something else at 8557 or whatever. Like there are lots of numbers available. He talks in the book about the reserved ones versus the almost everything else is not reserved. You have like thousands of numbers to choose from. Um, and so, all right, I am uh, using Docker, building this image that is just a simple uh, plumber API. We looked at that in the Docker chapter. So it's the one that we had used before. Uh, I don't need this end now, so I can ignore that. And I'm gonna get ready to run this as soon as uh, it's done setting up via the um, tunnel. So again, if in the tunnel, we we're saying that I want the 8555 on the remote host to map to my local hosts 8555. Um, again, I could make that different if I wanted to. And there we go. And when I run that, now we have this API. And if we go to uh, slash stats, it is again, that, um, that data, or I guess the other endpoint that this API has is slash plot uh, that generates a plot. Um, so yeah, that's all setting or that's all working. That's it's running. Um, I'm going to again, close the tunnel because now that's, oh, that's the end of chapter 11. So again, I kind of blew through there, uh, but that's the basics. We, we created a user. We, um, did change some file permissions and we changed owners. We changed groups. Um, the chapter goes into more details about all those things, but the lab does hit think everything that's in the chapter, or at least most of it. Um, so that takes us to chapter 12, uh, which is about the networks, their networking. Um, so this is where we are going to do some uh, setting up. Basically, it's the uh, Nginx chapter. Um, he talks a lot about like what ports are and what they mean and how, how they work and what the pieces of a URL are. Um, again, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into all those details. They're available in the book, but we're going to use those details to um, run both our studio and this plumber API on our server. The nice thing I, that I really like about this is that we can, it, by the end of this, you should be able to see that, oh, you could run like 20 APIs on your server at, with different containers running them, and it would uh, the logic of what we see here would allow you to do that. All right, so I am in as the user and I need to install Nginx. So Nginx is our, um, like what we're going to be using for routing. Uh, it takes things that come in on um, the, like the web port, the HTTP or HTTPS port, and you can route them off to other things on your server. Um, I just realized that that's still hanging. So that's interesting. Um, we'll see what's up with that in a little bit. 
uh maybe because i had the plot running i don't know anyway um so we installed it uh uh let's see so yeah that's installed now we need to do some things uh in the instance and again this is just because i didn't set it uh at the start um yeah, we still have the terminated one hanging out there. So this is, we only have SSH open on our server, like we did that on purpose um, when we set it up, but now we want HTTP and while we're in here, we're gonna add HTTPS. And so to do that, I, I go to, I mean, there are other paths to get here, but the uh, one we're gonna talk about is, this is the server that we're playing on. I'm going to go to that security tab and jump over to the wizard or the, um, security group in theory. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to edit my inbound rules. So again, it's inbound to the server. Like, what are you allowing? What ports are you allowing people to come in? Um, uh, that is, uh, so Gus said in the chat that there's a, a GUI Docker image to make uh, things easier or more complicated, depending how you look at it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, this is working, so I'm not going to change it for now. Uh, yeah. But um, that is good it's, to know. It's more of like a if you were to run this locally, like if you're building a local right server thing, then it would be easier. But a lot of the tutorials are YAML based, and so you can get lost really easily. And that's where like your initial gut instinct is, oh, GUI is easier, but really if you need help, then it's not. Right. But that's good to know about. Um, so yeah, in these inbound rules, I'm just allowing HTTP and HTTPS while we're in here. It won't, the HTTPS won't actually work yet, but we're gonna allow it. Um, the, uh, 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 where was my point on that? That, uh, you know, again, when we set up the server, we could have just um, set these to be open. Um, you can also like, you can specify only certain IP addresses can reach it. That might be something that you need if you're doing this um, at work. Um, you can set up security groups and you can do all kinds of things. But the general idea here is we're just saying, okay, yeah, you can SSH in, we don't wanna take that away. And you can reach it through HTTP and HTTPS. All right, so that's that. All right, so now we need to go back to this one. And actually, I'm gonna kill that one because I don't know why it was hanging open. All right, um, we are going to be messing with the Nginx uh, uh, configuration file. And so the first thing that you should generally do if you're gonna do that is copy it to a backup. Um, and so that's where what we're starting with here. And then we're gonna edit it and you can edit it using whatever you want to use to edit it. Um, I uh, used to be really comfortable with Vim. Now I'm only kind of comfortable with Vim, but um, at least I can do things like, I'm just gonna nuke what they have there by uh, deleting DD is delete a line and you can just put a number in front of that to do a whole bunch of them. Um, so yeah, I, I'm nuking what they give us to start with to work or go with what he uh, provided. Oops, why? Oh. All right. Um, the one thing I need to change in here, so I'm actually not gonna copy all the way to the end, is I had I have this fake version of the um, address that I'm going to replace with my real one. He does not include that in his um, configuration file, but uh, I swear I needed it. Like, like I said, I've changed a lot of things since I needed it. So I might not actually need it. Um, and I'll try to run through this again, um, you know, later and I'll remove that line if you don't need it at this point. But again, it, it, um, you only, we only really need it because we're doing piecemeal. Um, when we get to the end, actually, I think I will change it that as a last slide, I'll add a like the full process if you're not breaking it up because we want to show uh, the step between HTTP and HTTPS. We're going to do it with and without 
URLs and all these things. If you had your URL ready to go, then you don't need to stop at this interim point. But anyway, um, why did it, what did I do? I broke, so I broke my, uh, my configuration um, because I don't have a semicolon, that's why. And so I need to add a semicolon there and now it should restart. Okay, no errors. And we can test it at that IP address. Now, I don't have anything real working yet, but we can see if we go to the IP address that it's got welcome to Nginx. So Nginx is working. It's uh, not doing anything yet, but it's working. Um, there, so some little bits that he doesn't really go into in the book. Uh, oops, I do want that new. Um, so there's the there is a root by default is at this nginx uh, usr share nginx html. That folder has an index.html in it that you can edit if you want something at this root. Um, and again, this server name is going to be kind of like, it's what gets stuck in front of uh, URLs as we do these other steps. Such as we're gonna go ahead and add uh, our studio. So we have our um, running our studio uh, instance on our server. And I'm going to go back in here and within that same uh, server block, right? Yes, so inside of the server block, yeah. Uh, I am going to add this location of slash our studio. So I'm saying if someone comes into uh, this port 80, um, which we're starting at, that's the HTTP port slash our studio, then do all this stuff. Now what it's doing, it's got a rewrite rule that's telling it to um, put anything that's slash they're passed there after the slash. Uh, I don't know that we actually need that for what we're working with here. We do need to tell it where is our studio running. So we have it running on 8787. So we tell it that there's some other settings that again, I just copy pasted from what he said. And um, I think actually he's working on the chapter right now where he dives deeper into what do all these settings mean. So um, for now, we're just going to accept them. You can kind of figure some of them out. Um, and you know, also you can look at the, the help docs for our studio server to see what a lot of them mean. But okay, we're gonna uh, save that. And again, restart Nginx, make sure we didn't miss any semicolons. And when we do that, in theory, this should work. But yes, so we're not secure. So this isn't, you know, we're not done yet but it's working. We, we have our studio running on a URL that we can reach from the internet. So good step. Um, next, we're gonna do the same thing for the Palmer Penguins uh, API. So edit that, uh, we're within this location. And after that, we're gonna add this Palmer location. Um, this one's really straightforward because there aren't a lot of um, like there aren't a lot of things we need to deal with the way this is set up right now at least. We're saying if you're at slash Palmer, then go to that 8555 um, and we need the uh, slash Palmer piece to keep to be inserted in there. He doesn't have this in the book yet. It just says to do. So I um, I intend to keep watching for him to update that part and see what else I might be missing. But this is what uh, other people have used. And so it seems to work. Um, and if we uh, save this and restart Nginx again, we can change our studio to Palmer slash the docs slash and there we go. It, it is there. We can see all the um, you know, documentation. We can uh, run things and see things and it, like it works. Uh, it, it'll give us our outputs. We can do everything that we can do with a Plumber API, which is cool. And again, I like 
I want to pause for a second um, because that's cool. Like the way this is set up, we've got slash Palmer, but you could have slash whatever. We could run a dozen APIs now. You know, we're all we're running on one micro server right now. You probably wouldn't want to be running high um, compute power APIs, a ton of them all on this server, but you could. It's not necessarily the best way to run things. Um, like lambdas are probably a better route for a lot of API type things. And we'll, uh, well, I don't think the book's gonna go into those, but I will be digging into that over the next uh, weeks. Um, but, you know, we've got it running. We've got a thing that that's working, um, but it's uh, not secure. So uh, that's the end of that chapter. Now we're on to chapter 13, because now we're gonna make it secure. Um, and yes, it is, uh, Ahmed says, it's pretty cool. I, I like, I can't remember, he has some language in that chapter that kind of, it's either that one or the next one that that like deflates, it's like it works, but it's dumb and broken and don't use this. And I left him a comment on it of, hey, no, it's cool. <laughs> like, don't take that away from us. We know that we have more to work to do, but at that moment, hey, it works. Um, all right, so this next chapter that I'm gonna again try to uh, especially blow through, actually these last two chapters don't take that long at all, but this, he goes into a lot more details about what the fully qualified domain name is telling you, um, what DNS uh, is and why it takes so long for it sometimes for things to propagate and how to set up records to route traffic through a domain. Um, Again, most of that we will uh, look at here, we'll deal with um, via the lab. So you can see all the details of what everything means in the chapter, but we're gonna dig into the lab. Um, and so, yeah, this is continuing from what we just set up. So it's running and we want to go to uh, network and security over in EC2 has this elastic IPs section. Um, I am not going to create a new one because like he talks about in the in the chapter it takes a while after you set up the records for it to propagate to point at the right place often it doesn't take you know often it takes almost no time but then sometimes it does take time so i want to keep the one that i have set up so i have this uh elastic ip which is saying i have this 54209187.27 set up as an ip that i can use I am going to not release, but disassociate that. So now it's not associated with any specific or it's about to not be associated with any instance. And then, so uh, pretend I had gone through here and just hit allocate, that will create uh, that IP. You can, or yeah, that IP address, you can give it a name or you know a tag. Um, you can set all kinds of things on it if you want to, but the basic idea is you can just allocate an IP creates the thing, and then you associate that IP with an instance. So it was running on labs too. Now we're working on labs. So I hit associate and now voila, that is now the IP address of that instance. And actually I should have um, logged out because now the way I was connected to that instance is not a valid route anymore because the IP address of that instance has changed. Um, and that is something I need to add to the notes of, hey, it's cleaner if you log off before doing this, because now it's gonna eventually, um, I, I'm trying to tell it that, yeah, there we go, that um, it can't talk to that anymore, but I can reconnect at, uh, at the new, uh, IP. Am I looking at the right? No, that is not correct. There we go. And I can see that it's correct because it has that 54209 yada yada that I had just given it. And I am going to go ahead and reconnect there. Um, and it failed. What happened? It had, it did change. Um, remote host identification has changed. Yes, I know. I just changed it. 
I thought that this worked before. I know that this worked before. Um, I wonder if it's just a timing thing. Does anyone have any idea why this isn't working? Because this did work for me not that long ago. Yeah, uh, just, just do what it says, John. Uh, just log oh. in. Uh, just log in with the Ubuntu user and then add the IP yeah. to the known host file. Yeah, I, it's just I didn't have to do that before, so it's interesting. It's failing uh, because you're trying to show everyone how to do it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, I'm going to have to give it uh, the, the formal. Oops, that's not what I want. Um, again, yeah, it's because we're. I'm trying to finish, and that's especially why it's going to fail. Um, do and then Ubuntu at that should work. Oh, um, oh, okay. Uh, let me hold on a sec. <laughs> I have to do it locally, not on the other server. So, um, I am just, just not sure what I'm going to see. So, click on the instance here in the console and click connect. Um, uh, but yeah, I should be able to do, um, hold on, I can just do this in Notepad. Ah, one moment. So open the file. <laughs> yeah. Darn it, come on, I've got another, I just have to get to the path, almost there. Trying to do things quickly makes it fail. So slow down, uh, open the main post, and somewhere in here is, uh, It failed. Um, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's be, it's specifically because I had logged into this earlier today. Got it. Okay. Um, this EC254 yada yada is at a different place now, and that's what is freaking it out. Got it. Um, okay. And so now it's going to be unknown. If I save this. Three, and then I can try with okay. Oops, Oops. yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, now I am back in as um, myself on that server, uh, and uh, I can go on to the next one. I, I'm not going to show this step because it depends where you registered, but in your registration, wherever you registered, you go into your DNS settings for that, uh, and you have to add uh, a star with whatever that IP address is that you just set up. A at um, star is like any subdomain that isn't specifically named. Go to the root, you know, go to the IP that you have that you set up. Um, at is the uh, the main like just your domain dot you is goes to there, and then C name is saying um, if you see www dot just redirect that to the root to the the main uh, domain. You could also set up other things, but that's the basic idea. All right, and so now that that's done, we. Uh, need to get uh, Nginx ready to go. So I have to grab my very password. The thing we need to change is here, you know, like I said, if we were doing this for real, I never would have put this here because it was only there for a moment. And now I'm going to put uh, 4DL, oops, 
thankfully that only did a little bit of harm. I wasn't in uh, insert mode. So, okay, 4dl.io and www.4dl.io are now the server. Um, write that and restart Nginx. I'm not actually sure. Oh yeah, okay. And now if we go to HTTP um, 4dl.io, let's make sure that we stay at HTTP slash our studio. Um, I don't know why that failed. Did I not hit the restart? I did restart, it's running, it's at, at the IP address. Uh, anyone see what I did wrong? Because this worked earlier. Um, you can check. check oh, stuff. it's, 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 it, it went to HTTPS, which will not work. So it's not. Oh, um, well, no. Uh, I didn't set the re the upgrade yet. Um, so in theory, this would work, but it's trying to, it's redirecting, I think it's redirecting to HTTPS and that will fail. No, there we it's go. Just, it's just not live yet. When you, get it should be. when you get the connection refused, there's something in the background that hasn't set up the connection or whatever you're trying to connect to isn't live yet. Because they, I get that all the time at home when I'm upgrading my Docker images and I'm just okay, like well. refreshing to check for it, but. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, also, because I say here, right here in the notes, that doesn't work yet. We haven't finished, <laughs> that's in the next chapter. Um, it only at this point is set up to work with uh, the root, so. <laughs> yes, it's not fully configured yet. That's why it didn't work. Okay. Uh, so, but we have it. So 4DL is going to this server. I should have done a step of make it not work at 4DL.io. And then it does work because it's hard to really prove that that's what's happening. But that's this IP address is what I have set up with my C name or not my C name, but my A records. Um, and so that should be good to go. Um, all right, so now we're gonna be doing HTTPS and hopefully I can do this in like four minutes. Um, there's some chat in the, on Slack and uh, generally that like, apparently the way he does this one is also a little bit harder than it needs to be, but it works. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, this chapter is pretty short. It just talks about how uh, it specifically like what problems SSL and HTTPS and technically TLS are solving and how they solve those problems. Um, but the really useful part is how easy it is now to set this up. So uh, we need to make sure that we have that line in Nginx, which we do, because we just did that. I'm gonna actually make sure that I don't have any typos or anything. Um, but yeah, those are there, the server name, that's the important part because um, we're gonna uh, <clears throat> use that, this, this cert bot uses that in order to uh, set up the certificates. And so um, I installed this cert bot and the Nginx like plugin for it. Okay, it's ready to go. Uh, he had us restart Nginx here. I don't think we actually need to do that, but whatever, it doesn't hurt. And we're going to set it to my domain and www.mymdomain. Um, and, oh, and right, there's a typo that I have, that he had, that I copied. So we need dash dash Nginx. Um, you need... And the D's, yep, 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 okay. So yeah, dash dash nginx, and then uh, dash D, 4DL, dash D, which I assume is domain for the www, and that still didn't work. Um, 
I needed that. And I thought the dash dash fixed it. Ordeal.io, www. I did this and it worked. What am I doing wrong? Um, any ideas? And then restarting again. That worked earlier today. And this is, you know, this is what sysadmining is like. Uh, I'm trying to see if I got an error that I didn't notice, and I don't think I did. Um, at this point, I just, I'm going to type and see if I did anything wrong there. Search box. Infinex d4dl.io d4dl.io. Yeah, apparently I had a typo somewhere in there. So okay, um, it wants an e email address, and so I'm giving it this email address. And I do want to, or I do agree um, to the TOS, but I don't want them to send me email. So, no. And it's going to set it up. I think it's going to be fine. And I'm getting ready for when it finishes. Hope I, I don't know. Okay. I wasn't sure if, um, like, requesting too often for the same URL was going to cause any problem because I'm doing that as this as I experiment with this. Apparently, it's okay with that. Um. So it did things to our nginx.com. Technically, we probably should have backed up before doing that. But if we look, um, like we don't, like number one, it like re rearranged things a little bit. Um, we're now looking, listening on 443 instead of 80 for the main block. And then down here, we have a block that is listening on 80 and uh, sending a redirect for, hey, upgrade this to, um, to SSL. So 443 is SSL or is HTTPS rather, and 80 is HTTP, um, not S. So, all right. So that's that's on 80. That's doing that. And the one thing that we need to do to make this work is for our studio, we're going to add another um, option that again is just something that our studio needs uh, for properly forwarding everything. Um, that should be it. And if we do another restart of Nginx, I um, can't remember if that's it. Oh, open the port, which we did already while we were in there. We opened HTTPS, so that should be ready to go. And so now if I go to, let's see, 4dl.io slash, oops, 4dl.io is fine. Um, note that we've got the lock there. 4dl.io slash our studio. That actually logs in or, or gives the login, um, hit the API, we get the API result again, all with the lock. And in theory, it does this right. If we say HTTP, it will upgrade. And yes, it goes to the HTTPS version. Um, he talked about deleting HTTP, but we've got this upgrade rule. I don't feel like, like why close the port? I don't know, like it feels like if you close the port, it just makes it not work versus if you leave the port open, it will send everyone to 443 once they go there. So I didn't, I felt like it's a better idea to auto upgrade rather than closing the port. Um, but that's something uh, to talk about um, probably in another session because we're out of time. Um, but yeah, that is chapters 11 through 14. Technically 10 through 14, because I redid the create the server part. Um, and with this, uh, working through some of the typos that I have and things like that, you can set up APIs and you can set up our studio. And if you read the chapter, you can set up uh, Jupyter Hub and you can do all these things. And so I'm excited to see in a month um, if anyone has found time to play uh, and what we have done in that time. Um, I do need to run though, but uh, I am looking forward to conversations on Slack.
Yeah, this is awesome. I really, really like seeing that. All right. And yeah, hopefully uh, people can learn from my mistakes. Uh, one of them that's really useful is if you run a command and you're sure that it's, that it's right, just retype it because I don't know what I had wrong in that, but I typed something wrong and I couldn't see what it was. Um, so it works. All right. I will see everyone on Slack. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.